hi everyone welcome back to my channel so this is yet another video on the link queue queries so we're going to see a few more link queue queries so as we've seen previously that uh, how can we create data table and how can we play around data table without using the build data table activity or add rows or add columns so in this video we're going to see that how can we you know concatenate the two columns and place it in the third column or we can even do that that we concatenate it based on some condition and then we write it into another excel or we use it for processing in the other workflow so all of that can be done and the next thing which we're going to see is how can we use the union and intersection of two lists or two arrays and use them in our workflows so first let's see what is the use of the union and intersection of two arrays or two list so for that we'll first create a list list one which is list one so we'll create it of let's say integer type and we'll have one two three in it then we'll create another list which is list two and this will also be of integer type and we'll assign some value to it let's name it that we assign three we assign four and we assign five okay and we'll drag in and assign activity because what our target is that we write a more concise and more compact code using the queries so we'll just write a single line code so what we're going to do is we'll have list one or list two, list one dot, we'll have union and we're going to do union with list two. So basically, if you see at a larger picture, what does union do? Union basically helps you to remove the duplicates from the two list. Suppose there is a use case in front of you in which you have to remove the duplicate values. So you can use union and now the way how do we see what has to be the data type of result as of now we know that it has to be a list of integer type but usually in more complex scenarios if you do not know you can just hover on and hover over and you can see that you know what it is saying is that you have to convert it to list of string from string so it cannot be assigned to string variables. So you'll have to convert it to a list of string. So we'll just do it and it's done. Oh, do we still have the error? Let's see what the error says. No, it's gone. Okay, so we'll just debug it instead of, you know, looping and then writing it down. Let's just debug it and see. Because when you have to print it, you cannot write a single line code of printing because then you'll have to loop. Okay, so let's see. So if we do the union, so we'll have one, two, three, four, five. So you see three is the duplicate over here, which is in list one also, and which is in list two. So union basically works to remove the duplicates. So what we have is the answer is one, two, three, four, five. So it's not just you can say that it's a set union what is the use of it this is the use that it will help you remove the duplicates and if we talk about intersection it will help you locate the duplicate suppose you want to check that is there any duplicate value which is coming in list two also in list one also and you want to check that yes if there is an duplicate value then you can check you can write intersect and you'll have a value in, if there is the value, a duplicate value, then you'll have some value in here in result. And to check it, what you can do is, if you write line and you check the count of this list, if the count is zero, that means there are no duplicate values, but if the count is not zero, that means there is a duplicate value. So this way you can check that whether the duplicate value is there or not, or instead, you know, let me just drag in an if so that it's more clear. So if I do here that result dot count, 
is equal to zero. So if it is zero, that means there is no duplicate value. Okay, and uh, let's drag in a message box. One message box here, if the condition is true, and one message box here, if the condition is false. So if the count is zero, that means there are no duplicates. We do not have any duplicates. And if the count is not zero, that means we have duplicates. And how many duplicates do we have? We can even get to know that if we just print in the count. What is the counter? What is the value of the counter? If we just print it, we'll get to know how many duplicate values are there. So now if we just run it, so as of now we can see that yes, three is there, which is the duplicate value because it is present in list one also and it is present in list two also. Okay, so see duplicates one. So there is only one duplicate present. Now, if we just remove the duplicates, let's remove the duplicates. So three is the duplicate here. Let's remove it and have six over here instead. And now let's run it. Now it should print that there are no duplicates. Let's see what does it print. So there are no duplicates because no duplicates are present. If we want to check the count, we can do it that uh, if we have here two and we have here three. So now we have two duplicates present. So we'll just run it. And let's wait for the message box to appear. So duplicates two, that means there are two duplicates present. Okay, so now coming on to the, the merging part. So let's see how the merging part has to be done. So this is, I've just dragged in a read range to read the values of the Excel. I'll assign it to a DT. So this is your Excel. Now in the third column, I'm gonna com combine these two columns, the student name and the age, and I'm gonna print it in the third column. So to do that, let's write an invoke code as we've seen earlier that how do we do it so in dt i hope you all are clear with the arguments in and out if you're not then just you know drop a comments here in the comment section below if you want to see a video explaining the concepts of the input and output arguments because they're very useful in all complex scenarios and especially in re framework so you want me to make a video of it and cover that thing, please mention it in the comment section below. Okay, so this error is because I haven't changed the type to data table. If you just over over it, you'll get to know. So I'll, you know, change the type to data type. Now let's go inside. Now what we have to do, we first have to iterate. So for that, I'll make a variable of type data row and I'll iterate because we drag in to, dra to loop in through the data table what we use is for each. So I'll write the same thing here. So we'll write for each dr in what's the data table we have got as input, it's in dt. So let's first add a column to this dt in which we'll write the combined thing. So we've seen previously how to do it. So in dt rows dot columns. Okay, so in dt is the name of the data table and not in dt rows, I got confused. So it's columns dot add and in the round brackets and in the double quotes we'll write the column name so now when we iterate so in this data row and in the column combine i'll be adding the other two values which is the column the first column the value at the first column which is zero or in the double quotes i can even mention the column name both will work and i'll convert it to string because it's data row 
and then I'll also combine the value at index 1 and then dot to string it's better to you know use convert dot to string instead of dot to string because it can give error if the value is null and convert dot to string handles that so i'll add next and that's it so what this will do basically this line this for each what it's going to do we can even write it in a single line but this is more clear and clean so what this will do it will add the first column value and the second column value and will write in the third column we can even do that that we write in a different excel all what we have to do is we'll be declaring our data table here like dim dt as data table and we'll have to define a new row for it so it will be like dim dr as data row as we've done and then we're going to write dr is equal to new row so we will be writing dr is equal to so dr will be basically our variable of the type data row and so we'll be writing dr is equal to the data table name as for now let's take it okay we can take it as dt also dt dot new row and because it's a function so you'll have this round brackets so like this you'll have a new row of it and then you can keep adding it in this data row instead of adding in the same data table if you want it to be written into a different data table and a different excel then you can make a data table and write in that so i'll be writing it in the third column of the same excel so we have the dt now so it's in and out both so it will return also it will write and return it in the same dt all what I have to do is either I can overwrite it by doing right range or I can write it in a separate Excel. It's up to my wish. So as for now, I'll be, you know, overwriting it. So I'll copy the same path and I'll be copying the same DT. So it's DT. Okay, all good. Let's run it and see, or we can even debug it and see. So let's debug it and see, and then we'll open the Excel and see. So before processing first, we'll see the data table in the output panel. So here we have the DT. So we have only student name and age. But after this invoke code, we'll have a combined column attached to this DT. So now when we'll see the DT, so we have student name and then combined. So we have this John 25, Bill 18, Ram 23. And uh, now we'll see the right range and it will write to the Excel. So what does right range do? It overrides it and what append range do? It adds beneath it. So we'll go open up the Excel and see. So it's this data to test. Let's see. Okay, so we have it here. Okay, so the column headers are missing. It's because we didn't click on the add headers property over here. So once we click it, it would be available there. So this is how you can merge the data table. You can even, you know, add in a condition on what condition you want to do it so if i want to combine it only if the age is above certain number so it's i'll write an if i'll write dr and i know the age is in the second column or i can even if i'm not sure i can even mention the column name which is age and uh, i'll convert it to the desired type so i'll convert it to in 32 and uh, I'll check that if it's above 21, then combine, or if it's 
below some age then combine and likewise I can play around it the error is because you have to write an end if also the if must end with end if and you can you know as I have shown in the previous videos always make a habit of writing everything you write in invoke or in between try and catch so that if there's any exception you are aware of it because you cannot debug the codes in the invoke code but if you put in a try catch then obviously if there is any error you'll be able to see it in the output panel so that's all for this video please don't forget to like share and subscribe and thanks thanks for watching happy learning